Hotel Del Monte was established initially by Charles Crocker. And it opened in 1880. The hotel, as Crocker was building it, uh, often was criticized by people who referred to it as Crocker's folly. Their belief that uh, visitors simply would not come to this out-of-the-way uh, hotel uh, in Monterey. When it opened in June 1880, it was booked solid. In fact, the hotel had to turn down 3,000 reservation requests in the first six weeks of operation alone. And it was an overnight success that translated into a remarkable business success for several decades. The hotel, because of its great success in bringing world leaders, um, people uh, who were pioneers, inventors, industrialists, uh, artists, poets, writers, bringing people to Monterey who might never have come. Hotel Del Monte truly introduced Monterey to the world. The early Hotel Del Monte, the Charles Crocker era Del Monte, opened at a time that the American West was still wild and uh, very much a, a rambunctious, uh, pioneering area. People who came to Del Monte in the uh, late 19th century uh, often traveled from Europe and from Asia to be able to come to the United States. And their impressions of the uh, United States were often set by writers like Mark Twain and uh, Bret Hart. Their visit to the Del Monte took them ultimately to a place that was billed as the world's most elegant seaside resort. The early Hotel Del Monte was a source of inspiration for many people. It also influenced the way that uh, people often viewed things such as goods and services and even ideas. It was the catalyst for the development of the Canadian Pacific Railroad and the series of resorts uh, that were built by that railroad were modeled on Hotel Del Monte. It was the catalyst for the creation of what we know of today as Del Monte Foods. The name was drawn specifically from the hotel name to represent a symbol of excellence. And it was the catalyst for many pioneering ideas and innovations. Steam heating, individual steam heating in guest rooms, uh, telephones in hotel guest rooms, and even later the first hotel in the country, perhaps in the world, to have its own art gallery. Hotel Del Monte vision was uh, broad and expansive. It was initially established by Charles Crocker and later built upon by uh, Samuel Finley Brown Morse. And SFB Morse uh, transformed Charles Crocker's vision of Del Monte as the world's most elegant seaside resort, shaping it, retaining that notion of an elegant resort, but adding to it a notion of a sports empire. And we see the ramifications of that vision today throughout the Monterey Peninsula with the tremendous recreational activities that we have. A typical day in the late 19th century might be an elaborate breakfast, a stroll uh, throughout the uh, botanical garden uh, that, that surrounded Hotel Del Monte. And it was an extensive botanical garden and then a carriage ride on the early 17-mile drive. And that early 17-mile drive, given its name because that's the distance that a Hotel Del Monte guest would travel from the front steps of the hotel 
via carriage throughout the Monterey area into today's Pebble Beach, what was then called the Hotel Del Monte Park Reservation, um, and then back to the Del Monte. That distance of 17 miles uh, took a guest to the great historic sites in our community uh, and some of the most beautiful scenic places in the world, and it left a lasting impression for them. So add to that other days that would involve uh, tennis, uh, yachting, fishing, uh, hunting, uh, in the later years, uh, golf, uh, other swimming, uh, other recreational activities, horse racing in the early years. So um, the Hotel Del Monte, even from its early origins, offered a place where people could recreate. And this was done at a time when recreation really was not in the common vernacular. It's quite possible that the early Hotel Del Monte, in fact, was a major influence in shaping the notion that recreation could be a part of lifestyle. The early Hotel Del Monte, built by Charles Crocker, opened in 1880. It burned to the ground in 1887. Uh, a point of coincidence. Uh, William Randolph Hearst had been visiting Hotel Del Monte for many years with his family. His mother, Phoebe Hearst, was a regular summer guest at hotel with the entire family. It just happened that Hearst had established his newspaper, the San Francisco Daily Examiner, just weeks before this Del Monte fire and the special edition that he created on that 1887 fire was distributed worldwide. It actually, the loss of the early Del Monte was actually a springboard for Hearst's career as a newspaper man. Charles Crocker immediately rebuilt. It took a few months to rebuild, but he set up a, a base camp right on the grounds, oversaw construction, of the new Del Monte himself. And uh, when the hotel reopened, it was uh, applauded worldwide. And that hotel, uh, built in the same style, just with an expanded uh, plan, uh, that hotel operated until a second fire in 1924. That fire destroyed a portion of the Hotel Del Monte. Crews were able to save uh, wings on the east and west side. At that point in time, uh, SFB Morse was president of Del Monte Properties Company. That's the immediate forerunner of today's Pebble Beach Company. And uh, Sam decided to build his new main building in a Spanish revival style. His architects did a remarkable job of creating that Spanish style in a way that they could also uh, incorporate those large east and west wings and make it look like it really came together. That uh, latter-day Hotel Del Monte uh, exists today as uh, the Naval Postgraduate School's administration building. With the reopening of the Spanish revival Del Monte, this dedication took place in May of 1926. Um, Hotel Del Monte once again became one of the world's premier hotels and the guest list um, included notables and celebrities um, worldwide and especially a lot of the uh, early Hollywood celebrities. So the Jazz Age was unfolding. There was this great spirit of life transforming after World War I, and the 1920s were absolutely rocking and rolling, and Hotel Del Monte was at the pinnacle of this new wave of uh, living, and its recreational uh, lifestyle, the sports empire uh, concept and philosophy that Sam promoted, truly enhanced uh, the whole experience that guests had at Del Monte. So 
Del Monte was bringing some of the most notable people in the world to Monterey, and among those uh, were uh, eccentric was the eccentric uh, Salvador Dali. Uh, Dali held a, a famous party, or some would say infamous party, in September 1941 at Hotel Del Monte, the night in the surrealist forest. Bruce Aris, one of the great local artists, uh, actually uh, did the decorations for the uh, night in the surrealist forest. They transformed the ground floor Bali room into a rock grotto. They brought trees, animals from the Oakland Zoo, they created the rock grotto effect by uh, filling gunny sacks and hanging them from the ceiling and putting them along the wall. And guests were invited and encouraged to dress in sort of their worst nightmare kind of uh, attire. Dali and his wife Gala sat at the uh, head of the table, which had been created as a, um, a massive bed, and that's where they, they greeted their guests. September 1941, just three months later, uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked and our nation went to war. At the time of the attack on Pearl Harbor, United States military forces consisted of about 350,000 uh, total. That's Navy, Marine Corps, Army, and Army Air Corps. That's the standing operating force of the time. And during the next, um, during the war, the United States mobilized uh, 12 and a half million men and women to create a steady state standing force of about 7 million. Well, the facilities that had existed prior to the war to support and sustain uh, that 350,000 uh, person force were totally overwhelmed in, the nation, in this mobilization. And so the Navy, for its part, um, requisitioned about 100 hotels around the country, as well as uh, created a number of agreements with universities and other businesses. In 1943, Hotel Del Monte became the Del Monte Pre-Flight School. Not a purchase, just an emergency oper use of the hotel. The Naval Postgraduate School formerly Hotel Del Monte, continues to uh, be a pioneer and an innovator. Today's era of digital communications, for example, uh, was greatly influenced by Naval Postgraduate School professors. We are the recipients of a remarkable legacy and heritage uh, because of Hotel Del Monte, because of the visionaries who shaped that original site. And I think that it's really important for our generation to enjoy that legacy of inspiration, beauty, and laughter and preserve it and pass it along for a new generation.